Let's look at another basic gate, that being a CMOS NAND gate. So let's consider the following topology of a, uh, of a transistor configuration. So let's just say that I had two PMOS transistors that I had in a parallel configuration. And I connected both of their sources to VCC. And I connected their drains together. And then I had two NMOS transistors, which I configured in series. And I connected them as followed. And then what I did is I had two inputs into the, into the circuit. So I had an A and a B. And what I did is I connected the A to both a PMOS in parallel and, and one of the NMOSs in series. And I connected the B to a PMOS in parallel and one of the NMOSs in series. So let's evaluate this and see what happens. It, it is, it's a CMOS NAND gate, but we need to prove to ourselves that this is actually working. So let's define the output to be the point right here. And this is common throughout the way that you create CMOS logic gates. This up here is going to be what we call the pull up network. And it represents the PMOSs are going to be used to pull the output up to VCC to drive a logic high. The NMOSs are going to be what are called the pull down network. And they are going to be used to pull the output to ground to drive a logic zero. There's rules here. You can never have the pull up network on at the same time the pull down network is on. So either one or the other is going to be on. And that makes sense because the output can only be driven to a one or a zero. You never want to drive it to a one and a zero at the same time. If you ever did, you would have a short between the power supply and the ground. <clears throat> now, the parallel and series configuration of the transistors, depending on whether we do parallel up here or serial or serial up here, <clears throat> that dictates the behavior of the actual logic gate itself. So let's take a look. Why don't we go through all four possible combinations? So we're going to have a true table where we have A and B, and we're going to have an output that sits here. And we will say we're going to evaluate for 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And we want to look at what we get out of this. So let's take a look at the first configuration, which is going to be a is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0. So we'll draw it right here. And I want to draw it in a switch configuration. So we know that, just to, just to remind ourselves, the PMOS is going to be uh, a 0 on its input. Let's put the 0 and 1 right here. This is on the control. A 0 is going to cause it to be on, and a 1 is going to cause it to be off. And in an NMOS transistor, you're going to have a 0 causes it to be off, and a 1 causes it to be on. So let's take a look at it. We're going to drive this situation where A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 0. That means that the PMOSs are going to be on and the NMOSs are going to be off. So if I drew the switch diagram of this, I would have VCC, and I would come over here, this, this one right here, would be closed. And then I would come over to here, and then I would come up here, and I would look at my next one, the B transistor on the PMOS. This one would be closed, and then my output would be here. If you look at the NMOSs, these would be open, and this would be open. And what we would have is, you would notice that the pull-up network, both of them are <coughs> shorting the output to VCC, and luckily the NMOS pull-down network is not connected to ground. So that means the output is going to be VCC that is going to be a logic 1. So when we have the input codes 0 and 0, we're going to produce an output of 1. Now let's take a look at the next code, which is going to be A is equal to a 0 and B is equal to a 1. Now in this situation, we're going to have A is going to be on. So the PMOS A is going to be on. So I'm going to go VCC, and the switch is now closed. And if we look at the transistor here, we're going to have this one is open. And we'll now come over to here to the output. And then down here what we're going to see is that with A is equal to 0, this transistor right here is going to be open. But this transistor is going to be closed. This is where, so this one's closed. This is where we start to see the behavior of parallel and serial networks. When something is in parallel, 
and you're looking at whether that network itself connected out up to BCC, all we need to do is have one of them closed. So in this situation, we had both of them closed, so we pulled the output up to VCC. But we didn't need both of them to be closed. We, we can have done that same thing with only one of them being closed. So in this situation, the output is indeed pulled up to VCC, but it only took one of them. You could have seen that it could have been <coughs> this transistor, or it could have been this transistor, or it could have been both transistors. <coughs> but it only took one of them to do that. In a complementary way, a series network, for it to be open, only one of them has to be open. So over here we had both of them open, and that created an open circuit down here. Well this one, we had one closed and one open. It didn't matter this was closed because this one was open. So this entire network was open and it didn't have any impact on the circuit. So that's kind of the complementary nature of parallel and series networks with respect to the pull up and the pull down networks. But more importantly, for zero one on the input codes, we got VCC on the output, and that was a logic one. <clears throat> okay? Now let's take a look at when A is equal to one and B is equal to zero. And what we're going to get here is now the PMOS transistor here is going to be open, and then we're going to have this PMOS transistor closed, and then we connect those together, and here's our output. And then in this situation, this NMOS is going to be closed. But it really didn't matter because this NMOS was open. So the pull down network was not turned on. But the pull up network was able to pull it up to VCC through this path now. So now in this situation, we have the code 10 produced a 1. OK, so we're almost done. Let's go to the final code. <coughs> so we're going to have A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 1, and you can kind of envision what's going to happen. Finally, we have a situation where both PMOS transistors are open or off, and now the pull-up network does not pull the output to VCC. It's the first time we've seen this. Now, the pull-down network has both transistors closed, so that means that finally the pull-down network has engaged and we're pulling the output to ground. So that's the final code. We have a ground on the output, which is, which is mapped to a logic zero <coughs> using positive logic. And there you have it. Now you look back at that and you say, OK, that configuration works great. It produces these different codes. What is this logic gate? Well, it is a two-input NAND gate. Now, <coughs> here's some important concepts of this. Notice that you could never create an AND gate. Okay? Because an AND in CMOS, an AND gate would look like this. An AND gate would look like 0, 0, 0, 1. <coughs> to, in order to create an AND gate, we would have to have a pull-up network that would produce zeros for these three codes. Okay? Now what you're going to find here is that And the reason you can't do that, it has to do with the configurations that are possible for the pull-up and the pull-down networks. So let's just take a look at just the limits of this. So let's say that I had, here's my possible input code, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And let's look at the PMOS networks that I could ever have. So there's really only two configurations. I can either have what we just showed, which was a, a parallel network. And... <coughs> And if you evaluate these, what's going to happen is that I'm going to evaluate what I have here. And I'm either going to, well, I'm going to put just on or off on here. So anytime I have a zero in this, I'll either they're both on or both off. So what I'm going to have is my PMOS will be on, on, on. Okay? So that will result in a 1, a 1, and a 1. And that's what we saw in the, the, P, uh, the CMOS NAND gate. The only other configuration you could have on the PMOS pull up would be a series series configuration, because there's only two transistors. So you're either going to have this, or you're going to have this. And let's write 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And I want to know, for those codes, will the PMOS be on or off? <coughs> now, for 0 and 0, it is they're both going to be closed, so that'll be on. 
But then for these, you're only going to have one on and one off. So either this one's going to be on and this is off, or this is on and this is off. So you're actually going to have this off and off. So you can see that <coughs> the only th you could have a one and a zero zero. But in the PMOS network, you can only either produce one 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 for these three input codes or one zero zero for those three input codes, and those don't match the behavior of an AND gate. Okay, they actually don't match the behavior of an OR gate either. Let's do a, the complementary, a complementary exercise where we look at the pull down networks and see what codes we could ever possibly have there. So I have an NMOS and an NMOS, and I could have the output right here, and I could either have a series network, which is what we just did with the, the NAND gate. So then this is let's see, zero there, da, 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 da. and we could also have a parallel network. So then right here, and this is ground. And if you think about it, we have 00011011. And I want to know, is the NMOS on or off? So this is the one we just did. So we're going to have off, off, off. Because since they're in series, one, whenever you have a zero on in any of these, it's going to turn it off. So you have to have both on in order to get it <coughs> to go. So you're going to have off, 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 and then once you have a one and a one, you're finally going to have a, an on. So you were able to finally drive a zero in there. And then in a similar manner, if you come over here, and I looked at all the possible codes I could have, I would have 00011011, and I want to know what the NMOS does. Well, for this situation, I'm going to have zero and zero, they're both going to be off. But then, as soon as I have a 1 on any of these, I'm going to have an on, on, and an on. And that's going to drive a 0, 0, and a 0. So notice again that this configuration for these three codes does not match an AND gate. Neither does this one right here. So the reason you can't create a CMOS AND gate is just due to the nature of how you have a PMOS that can produce ones, and it can only take on two configurations, either seri serial or, or series or parallel. And the same thing down here with the NMOS. Just the way that you do the serial and parallel combinations, and you have to have the PMOS transistors provide the pull up, and the NMOS transistors provide the pull down, the codes that are produced just do not map into either an AND gate, or for that matter, an OR gate. So we're really stuck with a NAND gate. And that's not a big deal, though, because since we have a NAND gate, we also have an inverter. So we can create this inverter. And if we wanted an AND gate, we'd just simply put an inverter at the end of this. So one of the things you'll notice, though, is that we're always creating these gates that have inversion bubbles at the, uh, on the output of them. And that has to do with just the nature of, of the architecture, which we just talked about. OK, so let's look at what would happen if I wanted to scale my NAND gate to have more inputs. So in this situation, I wanted to come along and say, OK, I have, I have a NAND gate now. And I want to make, or I have a two input NAND gate, and I want to make a three input NAND gate. Is it possible for me to do that? Well, it turns out that it is. And we can just kind of take advantage of the architecture which we've been looking at in terms of serial and parallel. So I'm going to come along. And what I want to do now is I want to create a three input NAND gate. So the first thing we want to do is draw the three input NAND gate symbol. And let's, let's draw the true table. So let's call it A, B, and C. Let's go A, B, C. So there's eight possible input codes, and we'll call the output F. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And what we want to produce is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 0. So we look at that true table, we notice something. We want to produce a 1 any time we have a 0 on the input codes. So any time you have at least one 0, you could have all three zeros, you can have two zeros. It doesn't matter. If I have a 0 on any of the input variables, the output should be a 1. That implies that you are going to have a parallel PMOS pull-up network. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put three PMOSs, each of them with an input of the of a separate input variable, so I have A, B, and C, and each of these will be connected to VCC, and this will now produce the output. 
So if you think of that parallel nature, it only takes one of these to be on at any given time to pull F up to VCC. That is a parallel PMOS pull-up network uh, implied by the true table. Okay, so that's great. Now we need an, a pull-down network that is always off for these input codes, and the only time it turns on is when you have 1, 1, and 1. Well, that implies a series network, <clears throat> so it'll only turn on for one input code. So what we're going to do is we're going to put three NMOSs in series, just like that, to form the PMOS, or excuse me, the NMOS pull-down network. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect the three input variables to the gates of those. So that means that we now have created a three input CMOS NAND gate and we've ensured by using a PMOS parallel network and a NMOS series network that we'll never have the pull up network on at the same time as the pull down network. <coughs> okay. So this this can extend, so if I wanted to make a, uh, a five input NAND gate, you would simply just keep adding PMOSs in parallel on the network up here, and you'd simply keep adding NMOSs in the series network. Now, can you do this forever? Well, it turns out that you cannot do this forever. So if you add too many, what happens is that, just due to the way that the uh, transistor behavior works, since these are in series, what happens is there's a small voltage drop as you walk through this chain. So if you get too many of these, what happens is that the voltage drop uh, that occurs here makes it such that the voltage on the input gate is never high enough to actually turn on the transistor relative to this point. Remember that the, the input had to be greater than the gate to source voltage or the, or the threshold voltage was defined between the gate and the source or the gate to source voltage has to be greater than the threshold voltage. Well, what happens is that the source voltage, as you put these in parallel, is not at zero anymore. As you get a bunch of these in series, there's a little bit of a voltage drop. So you can think about the last one, this is at zero volts, this is going to be at, let's say, one volt, this is at two volts. <clears throat> and so what happens is the more you put in there, you're not able to actually turn this transistor completely off. So that prevents you from adding an a <coughs> adding an infinite number there. This is actually where the fan in specification comes from. It comes from this whole notion of you just can't add a whole bunch of these in series. Okay? Alright, so that is now how you create a CMOS NAND gate.